So back in 2008 to about 2011, here in the Nut and Fancy Project, I had an agenda when it came to cold steel knives. That's right, I did. Another word for a strongly held point of view. I loved cold steel. And yet back in 08, 09, all the way up to, I don't know, 11, maybe even to 12, I read nothing but negativity about the brand. And so when I would roll a cold steel blade on camera, I would pretty much rave about it. Telling the world how much knife you get with this brand. How you will get blades that you won't find anywhere else for the pricing level. Take, for instance, this extra large Recon 1, heavily thumped in TMP. And if you haven't been watching the knife show, you should know that I love the large tactical folding knives that Cold Steel does. That was my agenda. And I don't know if it's because of you guys, TMP Knife Nation. I know you have bought thousands of Cold Steel knives. But I am glad to say, glad to report that I don't see a lot of that negativity about Cold Steel anymore. I see a lot of fans to Cold Steel. And if you're new to the brand uh, or you just have bought it within the last couple years, uh, welcome aboard, man. I've always loved them. Always. Long before the Nut and Fancy Project. And so when I would roll a Cold Steel knife, take your pick of whichever ones I've reviewed in the past, I, I would have an agenda. I was like, dudes, the world is wrong on this, at least the internet world. And I saw a lot of bias. I don't know if it was directed to Lynn Thompson. We've talked about that before. But as a, the product, God, it's so good. It's so good. I mean, the triad lock, this one I just beat on, you know, about four years ago, I just came out and said, Demco's triad lock is exactly what they say it is. It's just like a, almost as strong as a fixed blade knife. You know, all that shock isn't transmitted directly to the lock bar. It's just super smart. And now I see a lot of positivity to it. So, man, I'm glad to be part of that process of turning things around uh, be giving this knife company some uh, appropriate kudos. Speaking of large folding knives, here comes one of, one of my all-time faves. This is an XL Clip Voyager, an OS 8A, if uh, memory serves. They are changing the steels. This one's marked 2012, engraved by myself. I love the long handle, the clip blade shape. I just am in love with. And then just recently, well, not recently, I don't know when, but I went out and bought in Amazon another Colt Steel Large Voyager in Tanto and it put a smile on my face. I just love, I think this is a great everyday carry defensive tool. Any one of these knives are, but in the application of tactical blade, I love the Tanto. And I've said that in the reviews. And, and no one does it like Colt Steel. The price point, no one's doing it like Colt Steel. And apparently I'm not the only one that loves this knife. And I'm going to show you a special edition, and it's from a dude called, I think, Jim Rawls of the Survival Blog. What's up, Jim? Don't know the guy. I'm sure he's a great dude. Uh, he wrote a book called The Patriots. Maybe you guys know it. And he came out with a special edition Cold Steel Voyager. I wanted you to check it out. Look at that. Oh, that is sick. Good job, Jim. Good job, Lynn, doing this collaboration. Uh, I just love it. Uh, and it, it's kind of funny going back to my Cold Steel reviews. One of the things I always said is, hey, why don't we come out with something other than black Cold Steel? Well, it took a special edition to do it. Uh, Jim chose OD Zytel for the handle. Great choice. It's just a beautiful color against the black. Nice. And in all other aspects, it is pretty much a Voyager, except one important change, which I will also high five Jim for. The liners in this special edition are 6061 aluminum. And I haven't thrown this on the scale yet, and I do keep a scale handy for this exact purpose. Let's see if it makes a difference, although I do have a lanyard on this one. Uh, the amount of knife you get with both of these, though, for the weight, it's just insane. These are big blades, and it's only 8.2 ounces, and that's with a lanyard. And the lanyard, we'll just say half an ounce for the lanyard. Um, and this has stainless steel liners in this one. Uh, let's see. Seven, nine. Okay, so a third of an ounce. So we'll call it half an ounce difference. Is that a huge difference? 
Um, I'll take it whenever I can get it, a, a lighter weight knife, even half an ounce here. Absolutely. I'm not one of those guys like, oh, I, I, I want and I really welcome a heavy knife. It's I'm not that way at all. I love that he used uh, aluminum liners in that. I like also that the blade steel is highly upgraded from this version. It's going to be CTS XHP. I've talked about it several times on camera. I have visited with manufacturers on camera in knife maker roundtables where we talked about that steel in depth go to the spider co round table i posted a couple years ago where we talk about the the powder metallurgy uh, manufacturing process that carpenter uses uh, and other steel manufacturers as well uh, it's a great steel it's tough and man is a sick edge coming out of here oh nice dlc coated and it's so it won't do this on you which I always kind of like, to be honest with you. I, I like it. I like it when it wears off. It's cool. But this DLC will wear longer. It's super hard. There is one thing about this blade I do not dig. No offense, Jim, but I don't like that it has a chisel grind on it. I hate chisel grinds. I freaking hate them. Now, is it because we're doing a combo edge, a partially serrated on a hollow ground tanto blade? Uh, honestly, I've never checked out a partially serrated lar ex extra large Voyager. Maybe they're all like that. Sorry if I missed it. Uh, maybe they are. W would I change it and change, by way of reference, here's this. Would I change it to a conventional grind? Uh, I might be tempted. What I do is just run this and wear it, beat on it, and then when it was dull, I might give it a go. The thing is, it's somewhat asymmetrical right down here. And with a hollow ground blade versus an FFG, it's a little bit different changing the grind because you don't have a ton of metal here. I don't know if you have enough metal down here on the primary grind to do it. I could be off. Uh, everything else is typical Voyager. I mean, it's going to come with two clips, left or right carry, no volcano issues on the stud. Lockup is just perfection. Triad lock, we talked about it. Beautiful real estate on the handle that envelops the hand. That is a tactical blade, my friends. And I think, uh, I didn't go to your blog, Jim, and read about your uh, intentions with this knife, but it might be intended in this philosophy of use that he's doing as a survival blade. An all-out replacement for a fixed blade, which I think is smart because it's only, as you saw, an 8-ounce blade. And it's a relatively long blade, so you could baton with this, split wood with it, do all the survival tasks that you'd have to do. Dual thumb studs and removable, once again, by the screw. So you have a nice flat plane to do a consistent angle sharpener. Adjustable here. Uh, I always do an underclip mod because this is this uh, gripping surface on the handles of the cold seal is just really rough. You can see my epoxy mod right here. Talked about it since 2009 or so. So this one will go in and out of pocket and it retains perfectly. Big lanyard hole, OD. Uh, now this is I, this is a knife you probably will not be able to buy everywhere. So look around. I'm sure it's uh, going to be at your favorite retailer site and pick it up. Then would I get this one or that one? Mm. Actually, let's open it up. Out of all the four knives on the table, which one would you buy? Nothing fancy. This will be your competitive options segment, by the way. Good question. I really love the uh, XHP steel on this. I'm not a big fan of the cold steel serrations. I love the OD. I love the aluminum liners. It, more of a second cool, really. We could see those were not, I don't know, a huge amount of weight difference. Mm, good question. I don't like the chisel grind, though, so I would probably go with this version. Sorry, Jim. I'm sure you'll sell a ton of them anyhow. Uh, I'd probably go with that one because I just love the, the plain edge, uh, although I really miss the OD handle. Uh, and any one of these would be great. I really like the recon. And that aggressive G10, it's super awesome. Uh, short review under 10 minutes. Great job, Cold Steel and Jim Rawls of the Survival Blog, Nothing Fancy Project. See you.